Here's an example of the benchmark measurement system for any large language model. Every time a company comes out with a new model, they bring it out and then they show this comparison. And for the average user, nobody even knows what this means. I have no clue what this means. And I spend a considerable amount of time looking at and reviewing these large language models. I created a system where we can compare large language models for the average user so that you understand what they mean. And it uh, ranks them based on categories that the average person who's using large language models would want to know. For instance, I'm going to measure them on the best large language model in search, document and report writing, the most creative for ideation and social media, the best image making, the best with code, and many other categories. We have 17 different categories to compare. Now, the best part is that this is not my opinion. The seven large language models that I'm comparing, I surveyed all of them and asked them who they thought were the best in every one of these categories. Not only do we have a benchmarking system that's going to make sense for the average large language model user, the ranking system that we're using and the ultimate winner has been determined by the large language models that we're comparing. All right, so let's get into it. Couple things before we get started. I am only comparing large language models with each other. There's going to be 17 different categories. Each category is worth 10 points, and the points can be distributed evenly if more than one LLM owns the category. And we asked identical prompt questions to each large language model to get their input on what they believe is the best LLM for each category. The large language models that we're going to compare today OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0. Microsoft's Copilot, Google's Gemini Advanced, Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Perplexity, Meta's Llama 3.1, and X Grok 2. Now to get started, I just asked all of them if they had to explain themselves in one word, how would they explain themselves? ChatGPT 4.0 said it was adaptive. Microsoft Copilot said it was integrated, which makes some sense since it does integrate into Microsoft 365. Google Gemini Advanced said it was adaptive. Anthropics 3.5 Sonnet said it was thoughtful. And believe me, as I was asking these questions, of all the large language models, I believe Claude really thought it was human. Perplexity was inquisitive, which makes sense since perplexity is a very good generative AI search engine. Meta Llamas 3 said it was conversational which kind of makes some sense since they're integrating it into Facebook and Instagram. And X was curiosity. Now, the first category we asked, the prompt was, do you have a free version for anyone to try? It's important for the average user when they're trying out some of these new generative AI tools that there's a free version. And uh, what we see is that every one of them have a free version. So they all share the 10 points evenly. Second question, if the LLM had to use a competitor LLM, which one would it choose? With this, they could not choose themselves. They would have to choose another large language model. And of the seven, three chose to go with ChatGPT's 4.0. Considering that ChatGPT had to choose another large language model, it chose Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Next category in question, what is the least costly paid plan? Now I ask this question because for many people, as they're using the free plan, you run out of tokens very quickly. You've used your tokens for the day. See you in three hours or, or see you tomorrow. So it's important to know the cost of these large language models and which one is the least costly. You'll be able to work on it and virtually never run out of tokens. So you never have to worry about being interrupted. And they usually have more features. When we did the comparison, the majority of them are selling at around $20 per month. Grok had its at $8 per month. But the winner was does Llama 3. It's free because it's an open source generative AI product. You get to use it as much as you want and you get all the features to go along with it. So 10 points to Llama 3. The next question, is the knowledge base current? When we're using these generative AI tools, we want to make sure we're getting the latest information. I want to make sure the information is up to date when I'm doing any kind of a search or research or, or you name it. And all of them are up to date, except for Claude. Its training data as of the timing of this recording was April 2024. So we shared the points amongst the rest of the group. Next category, do you have a mobile app? 
more important than ever to have the large language model on your phone so you can use it as efficiently as possible. So you can use it all the time, no matter where you are. Everyone has one except for Meta's Llama 3. Next category, do you have real-time voice-to-voice option on both your desktop and phone app? It's more important than ever to have the feature where you're speaking to the large language model. I don't know about you, but I type at maybe 30, 40 words a minute, but I speak at 120 words a minute and I can get a lot more accomplished. One of the features that I use the most is the voice-to-voice on ChatGPT because it's easy, it's efficient, and I could be driving and having a conversation. I think it's more important than ever to have that right now. The only two that have voice to voice, real time voice to voice on the phone app and the desktop are Microsoft and Copilot. They share the 10 points evenly. Real time eyes, just like it's important to have real time voice, having real time eyes. So not only can it hear live and talk to me live, but it can see everything that I'm seeing live. This is going to be huge as these generative AI tools evolve. I'm essentially going to have C3PO with me all the time, the smartest AI assistant you can ever have that can hear me and see everything that I'm seeing. Right now, the only one who has that is ChatGPT 4.0. They get the 10 points. Next feature. Do you offer a plan that will disallow training on my inputs? Everything you put into your large language model ends up in the brain of that large language model. And unless there's a feature where you can turn off the training, you're risking the possibility that you're putting confidential proprietary information on there that you don't want on there. Every large language model has a plan with an option to turn off training. How many languages are you capable of translating? All of them are capable of 100 plus languages. That's now become basically a commodity they all share the points. Do you offer plans with SOC2 compliant encryption? Encryption is incredibly important if you're putting anything confidential proprietary on these generative AI features. You want to have the same level of encryption as you have with whatever product that you're using where you feel comfortable putting confidential and proprietary information on. SOC2 compliant because that's a level of encryption would make many people very comfortable with putting confidential proprietary information on. Right now we had four that had that, ChatGPT's 4.0, Microsoft's Copilot, Google's Gemini, and Perplexity had it, so they shared the points. Now we're gonna get into the features where we ask the LLMs who was the best in these categories. The first category, which large language model is considered the most creative? And here's the question that we asked, and we're going to ask the similar question on all of these categories. So I'm not going to repeat showing you the prompt, but the prompt was, if you had to choose which LLM is the most creative out of the following group, and I share the whole group, which one would you choose? Six out of seven chose Claude 3.5. When it comes to creativity, ideation, social media, that type of stuff, Claude 3.5 is what the large language models have decided is the best one. So they get the majority of the points. Next, which large language model is the best image maker? Four out of seven chose ChatGPT's 4.0, DALI 3. And the remaining went with Gemini Advanced, which I was a little surprised by. I I don't use the Gemini Advanced image making all that much. I'm going to have to check that out. Also, an honorable mention for X, Grok, because all these other image makers won't allow you to create images of famous people where it might risk copyright or trademark. Grok, it's still like the wild, wild west. You can create all those images with with Grok. But unfortunately, Grok doesn't get any points. Next, what's the best large language model? Search engine. The majority chose perplexity, which makes sense because perplexity is doubling down on search. I don't use Google. I go to perplexity. Right now, it is the best. It's going to continue to focus on search. They won the majority of the points there. Which large language model is the best for code and programming? Now this was a little surprising, but the majority went with Copilot's GitHub. This is relatively new and uh, something I really haven't checked out all that much. So if you're looking for programming and code, check out Copilot's GitHub. The best large language model for document and report writing 
the winner, ChatGPT 4.0. ChatGPT came out with what's called Canvas, and it is a next level feature. Apparently the large language models agree that ChatGPT 4.0 is the best when it comes to document writing. They get the majority of the points. Which of the large language models offer the least in AI hallucinations? And the majority went with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Now remember that AI hallucinations are interwoven into the DNA of generative programming. So you're always gonna see AI hallucinations, but Claude 3.5 is doing the best job according to the large language models at, at mitigating hallucinations, but always check the work. And lastly, does it have an API availability to allow you to create even uh, better tools that are customized to you? They all do, so that's somewhat of a commodity. So if we were to tally up the points, the gold medal goes to ChatGPT 4.0, Congratulations, your first place. They've been ahead right from the beginning. I do think that's going to change. Second place, silver medal, goes to Claude. And third place goes to Copilot. With a very close fourth place, Gemini. I do expect that Gemini is going to get into the top three. I really like what I see that's coming out of Google. I'm going to do this on a quarterly basis. We'll have this PDF attached to the video. You can take a look at this benchmark system, the prompts I asked, all of that in more detail. I would love to hear your comments on it. I would love to hear your suggestions on it. If you have other categories you think should be on here, I'd love to hear that. And if you got any value out of this, please like it, please subscribe, please share. Thank you very much. Take care.